So this is B1 lesson 2 and this is about the prokaryotic cells. So usually what I'd do is to introduce the diagram I would give that to someone in the class and everyone would sit in pairs back to back and then one person would describe the prokaryotic cell and the other person would draw it. We can't do that now so what you could do is you could pause the video and see if you can remember the eukaryotic cells that we did in the last lesson so if you could draw a plant and animal cell from memory and name the organelles but today we're looking at prokaryotic cells so you'll be able to draw and describe them classify bacterial cells as prokaryotic cells draw and label the organelles present and explain the functions of the organelles so like we did yesterday but just for prokaryotic cells instead so your specification tells you that bacterial cells are classified as prokaryotic cells and are much smaller in comparison to the eukaryotes they've got cytoplasm in a cell membrane surrounded by a cell wall and then they've got genetic material that's not actually enclosed in a, in a nucleus so prokaryotic means it, it's this well it's the classification of cells that contain bacterial cells and pro means before so the first prokaryotes came before living organisms so when we move on to classification in year 11 you'll have a look at three forms of classification and you'll have the archaea you'll have the eukaryota and then you'll say bacterial cells but really they're the prokaryota so they've introduced it here but they don't get you to use it later on which is a shame but the bacterial cells came first and they are much smaller than eukaryotic cells which is important for you to remember so this is what a typical prokaryotic cell looks like but the, their morphology or the way that they are shaped and the different types of them they might have some of these structures they might not have some of these structures but they will all have the same basic structures so I'm just going to get a highlighter so if you notice they have a cell membrane and a cell wall and then they have a capsule or slime layer so if we go back to the specifications they told you here that they have got a cell membrane surrounded by a cell wall so in your spec it's not mentioned in the capsule layer but they often do have one so it's a thicker layer now the cell wall in a bacterial cell is made of chitin so it's not made of cellulose so that's one of the main differences it's made from a different substance but the cell membrane does the same job it's semi permeable and it controls the substances entering leaving the cell and the cell wall provides structure and support so you'll notice as well that the prokaryotic cells or bacterial cells have ribosomes because all living things rely on enzymes and enzymes are proteins they need to have ribosomes to be able to make proteins and so it's labeling the ribosomes as those little black dots and they're all over the cell but they do tend to um, aggregate around the nucleus except for this cell doesn't have a nucleus so you can see here that it says plasmid and DNA so it's actually got a circular loop of DNA it doesn't have a membrane bound nucleus and that that's kind of like this idea that they came before everything else so the nucleus is like a newly evolved thing whereas before they just have a plasmid which is a circular loop of DNA now this particular bacterial cell or prokaryotic cell has a flagellum and a flagellum wiggles about and allows it to move so that it can be motile so that it can move but they don't all have those and you get different classifications of bacteria so some of them are rod shaped some of them are um, circular like spherical shaped some of them are shaped like commas and some of them are spiral so there's different classifications of the prokaryotes so you don't have to know all of them and they can give you any one to label but what you will find is it always has a cell membrane it always has a cell wall it has cytoplasm which is where the chemical reactions occur it will have a plasmid and it will have ribosomes so they're the common features that you need to look out for 
So I'm just going to show you what a plasmid is. Now you don't need to worry about all these labels around it. It's just showing you really that a plasmid is a circular piece of DNA and all those little sections on it are just showing you coding for different genes. So it's got different genes on it. So a plasmid is a circular loop of DNA and that's what you'll be able to add to your table from the previous lesson because all of the other things do the same thing so you don't need to write them again so again I'd usually get you to research that but I've pretty much explained what every part does so you've got the structure and the function of it so if you go back to the table now where you have plasmid at the bottom you'll be able to add that that is a circular loop of DNA and then what I've done here is I've shown you what the structure looks like so the one that I showed you before, so I'll just go back to it, that is a 3D bacterial cell or prokaryotic cell and you need to be able to draw a 2D version of it. So remember that when you're drawing a biological diagram you have to draw 2D lines, no sketching. And I have drawn a flagellum on this one but you don't need to draw it. So you can then label the parts. So you've got the cell membrane which is always the inside one and that is semi-permeable. You've got the cell wall, which is the next one, which provides strength and support, and then this one is the capsule or slime layer, but that's you don't need to know that. It's good if you remember it. Capsule slime layer. Then you've got cytoplasm. Obviously yours will be much neater than this. Then this is a flagellum, and it allows it to move, but they can't all move. Then you've got your circular piece of DNA, which is a plasmid. And then you've got your ribosomes, which are involved in protein synthesis, so they make proteins. So now you can have a go at this exam question. So you can pause the video and see if you can answer all the questions. And then when you've done that, you can check your answers.